Okay, thanks so much. Thanks so much. And I'm not originally from here, uh, but I came here as soon as I'd found, about, found out about it. And New Orleans is a pretty, pretty amazing place. I've, uh, I've taught finance uh, at Tulane University for 29 years. I'm very proud to be at Tulane because they've been such a, a big part of the comeback. Uh, and Tulane has really done very, very well. We're averaging about 30,000 applications for 1,600 freshman slots each year. Uh, it, is, it has really been something we have mandatory community service. Uh, in, in a word, I mean, we're all in. And uh, what I, I've become uh, pretty much an expert on the area's economy. Uh, and I see the economy from a lot of different perspectives. Now, we've had a bad, really tough time of it. I mean, let's, let's face it. Uh, you know, in the last five years ago, we had the BP oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. Ten years ago, we had the devastation of Hurricane Katrina. For a while, for a while, I thought down here, it felt like we were living in the Old Testament. You know, it had, it had, um, the, uh, I, th I thought, what's next? Locusts, frogs, you know, and, um, <laughs> but I stayed, and, uh, <laughs> And, uh, and I, I have a pretty good perspective on the economy because I do three very different and unique things that give me a, uh, an odd insight into the region's economy. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that. Uh, first of all, as uh, Mark had mentioned, I host a radio show on NPR, uh, WWNO 89.9 FM. Uh, it's a weekly business show called Out to Lunch. And uh, it's a really fun show. I invite a couple of entrepreneurs each week uh, to come on in and uh, talk about their, what they're they're doing for a business. I've had the oddest guests. I remember I, I've had a, had a guy, I keep thinking about, he was on about a year ago. He invented a uh, case for your iPhone that uh, turns it into a stun gun. I think there's very, it weaponizes your iPhone. I thought this is a very interesting guy. <laughs> It's, uh, <laughs> I'll never forget him. It shoots 650,000 volts, and, uh, and the lanyap of this product, I just thought about this, is the lanyap, which is such a great Louisiana term, was a uh, is that when you stun somebody, it recharges the phone, which is, <laughs> I just, I just love this guy. <laughs> Leading to such uncomfortable situations as, sorry, Stan, I was low on juice, you know, and um, I love the guests. And of course, it's for both genders for safety reasons, but I, I think particularly for women, because you know, you're, you, have, you have your phone with you all the time, but you, it might have something in your purse, but you never find it when you needed it. You know, it's like, a, hold on one second, it's, a, it's in this purse, it's green, it says U.S. Army, one minute. And so, they, um, but, uh, so that's been a lot of fun. I bring in two uh, established business people and a young entrepreneur trying to get started. And we talk about the trials and joys of running a business and give some insight and ideas to this new entrepreneur that's starting a brand new for-profit or not-for-profit venture. And uh, that's been a lot of fun. So it's a lot like the TV show Shark Tank, but with no money and a lot nicer people. And uh, <laughs> so we, <laughs> and we do it at Commander's Palace, which is arguably the best restaurant in the world. So nobody has ever turned me down to to come to lunch to be on the, uh, to be on the show. Uh, one of the things I want to talk about is one of the big improvements that's happened and that I start to hear from guests. I, mean, I talk to these guests every single week, and I ask people, how is business different pre-Katrina and post-Katrina? And they tell me it's as different as night and day. And the biggest reason is that with several, for several decades, we were a real city of brain drain. We were losing our best people. We have turned that around, and we are now the center for brain gain. And it's changed everything dramatically. In fact, Forbes magazine recently called us the number one brain power city in the country. That has really made a huge impact. And a lot of these people are people coming in, uh, you know, they're attracting people. They're, uh, a lot of these people are going in the education side. And I don't know if you've met these people that have come down to work at our most troubled schools, but they are pretty, pretty terrific folks. Uh, and they're making a real difference. New Orleans has become the Petri dish for uh, education reforms. One of the great things after Katrina is we got an outpouring of love and, and hope and, uh, and, and assistance from all over the world. But uh, it didn't come from everybody. I remember after Katrina, uh, I'd be out there in that fall semester we were off, and I was out giving a lot of talks around the country. And uh, inevitably, as I'd give a talk, I probably did a dozen of these, somebody would come up to me and say, you know why that storm hit New Orleans is because, I think that was her right there, is they, uh, <laughs> Is, be, is because of all the sinning in New Orleans, you know, and, uh, and that made me so furious, you know, and I remember asking him, and I came home, I asked a minister about that, and she said, well, don't let that bother you, just tell him what I tell him, 
And I said, what's that? And she says, well, okay, but the uh, French Quarter stayed dry and both seminaries got 11 feet of water. So it's, um, <laughs> the other thing, of course, is that uh, we've become the number one city in the country for young entrepreneurs. And uh, why is that happening? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, this is a very hip city, and young entrepreneurs, that's the way they want to live. And uh, now there are other hip, attractive cities, New York, Boston, San Francisco, but they're very, very, very expensive to live in. And young entrepreneurs don't have a lot of resources. And frankly, you can have a good time in New Orleans on just about any kind of budget. Uh, the second thing is we now have about a half dozen terrific business incubators here that are taking just people with just ideas ideas, giving them a hand, and helping turn those ideas into business success stories. And I think that's really a, uh, a big, big difference that's occurred and has helped us, helped us grow from here. Uh, on a more personal note, uh, I see a big change in my own students at, at Tulane. I've been there for 29 years, and originally, I would say when I first started, not a single soul from the class stayed. And now, the city has such a different image and such different opportunities that I would say about a third of our students stay and start their careers here. And that is a huge boost to the, uh, to the area's economy. Let's see. Okay, let's see. The, uh... There we go. The other reason I uh, uh, think I have an interesting perspective on the city is I'm the... For the last 20 years, I've been the independent economist on the city's revenue estimating committee. And uh, this is the group that gets together and tries to figure out how much money is going to come into the city's coffers over the next year. So it's, a very, it's actually a quite important position. And we're really looking at trying to estimate sales taxes and property taxes. Um, and I think we do a pretty good job of it. Now, when, you know, 10 years ago, New Orleans was on its back financially, and remember? But we've really come back in a big way. We now have more hotel rooms, more music venues, and more restaurants than we did before the storm. And it's been a big, big difference. Now, one of the real big differences has uh, been this, is that we've created a retailing boom in the city. I used to say that New Orleans was funny because you could get an exquisitely prepared plate of trout almondine in the city, but you had to leave the parish to buy a pair of underwear, and uh, and and that was that was and it was true, and it's very rough way to go. And uh, now, that's, uh, you know, when you need underwear, you need underwear, and that's really how how it goes. But the uh, but. But now that's changed because we've had all these retailers move in here. And what it's done for us at the Revenue Estimating Committee, it's created a large, a large and very predictable stream of sales tax revenue on which we can run the city, which is a, a big, big difference and a huge advantage that we didn't, uh, that we didn't have uh, before. Now, I'm, I'm not a Pollyanna. I'm not. I, I realize there are some things that are still problematic. Uh, I'm still worried about the fact that the Army Corps of Engineers is headquartered on Leak Avenue. That, 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 <laughs> that seems like something we should worry about. They, uh, they, uh, <laughs> they, uh, fi finally, I'm the, uh, fo the founder and director of Birken Road Reports, which I'll tell you a little bit about here. Um, Birken Road Reports is uh, there I am with my best friend Warren Buffett. He's always we're always hanging out together. Is the uh, <laughs> the uh, <laughs> I started Birken Road Reports in 1993. It was named after William Birken Road, a very generous uh, Tulane alum, and it's the first student stock research program in the country. And we've got a lot of recognition for it. And what I do is I take 200 students every year. I break them up into teams of five, and each team is assigned to one of 40 smaller publicly traded companies headquartered in this region. And uh, we like these smaller companies because we really think these are probably stocks that maybe Wall Street has overlooked. And uh, we call them stocks under rocks. And we really have a great time. We, those students go out and they write 30-page investment research reports on these companies. A lot of these companies, no analysts have visited for years. You can see them as we pull up. It's like, they're coming, get the donuts. And uh, there's a... Uh, <laughs> It's very, <laughs> and, uh, and we're very glad to do it. Not only are we writing the reports, but we, uh, we're out there visiting the companies. We're spending time with the CEO and the CFO. It's a very unique experience. And we do have the, the best field trips in the free world. We take, uh, we've taken helicopters to offshore oil rigs. We've gone to steel mills. We've been to chicken processing plants. If you've, if you've never been to a chicken processing plant, do take the family. That is a terrific outing. There's uh, um, it is, I know, and I don't care what they say, after a couple of years of therapy, these kids are fine, and um, 
They also, about 13 years ago, created the Birken Road Mutual Fund. And the reason I want to talk to you about this is the signal that it, that it sends. Um, and we're speaking of signals, by the way. I don't know if you saw this, but the city's bond rating was raised uh, about a month ago. And that is a very positive signal. So the, things, the, the improvement of the city is not going unnoticed. Uh, you get a, an improvement in your bond rating is not just a positive financial signal, but it actually lowers the cost of the city's borrowing going forward. So it's a big deal. But the reason I mentioned the mutual fund in here is it was started 13 years ago. They, Hancock Bank created it. And what they do is they, uh, they use the students' research, among other sources, and create a fund that is all made up of the region's companies. And it's been open 13 years, and it uh, has about $800 million, and it's outperformed 94% of the nation's mutual funds, which is uh, really pretty embarrassing because they have the lowest payroll on Wall Street, zero. And um, they, there's a... Uh, or as one kind of wise student said to me one day, he goes, actually, it's negative because we pay you to take the course. So it's, um, <laughs> they, uh, but I'm a firm believer in that stocks are leading economic indicators. And if you've got a fund made up of the area's companies, well, and it's doing that well, I think that's a great signal for the outlook for this part of the world economically. And I think that's something we should, we should really uh, all be very proud of. We've, we still have, when you look at the industries in New Orleans, we still have uh, what has been our base. The port is very, very strong. We're still a big oil and gas center. Uh, we still are a magnet for tourism and conventions. But I think the big difference now is that we're attracting new industries since Katrina. We're really becoming a player in technology, in film production, and in life sciences. And that has been a big deal. And the cities that embrace technology and, and sciences are really going to be the places that are going to benefit in the next 10 to 20 years. And New Orleans has got a very, very good grip on that. We're embracing science and technology. There's other parts of the country that don't seem to be doing that. You see the, the people that are out there as climate change deniers. You've got, a, you've got another group that believes we staged the moonwalk. I, I, I'm a little concerned about these people. They, uh, we know that we walked on the moon because we know Louis Armstrong walked on the moon. It was a, it was a big deal. It was, it was 69. He was a local kid. We were all excited. It was very, um, there was plenty of reasons to believe that. Um, the other thing is it, the expansion, the good news economically here, isn't just New Orleans proper. It really extends the whole bottom part of the state all the way over to Lake Charles. Uh, there is an unprecedented industrial uh, expansion going on in this in this area and it's being driven by a couple of things you know we always have great logistics the port the railroads the pipelines but the big story is that we have so much plentiful low cost uh, clean burning natural gas uh, more than really any place else and I'm going to tell you something Oil and natural gas are very different economically. Oil is basically priced the same way, price pretty much all over the world. It moves by tanker and it can be arbitrage, so it really trades at about the same price. But natural gas doesn't work that way. It is a fuel that is basically priced and used pretty much where it's found. It's very difficult to transport it uh, through continents. So what the situation we have is that natural gas sells for about $3 a thousand cubic feet here. It sells for about $9 a thousand cubic feet in, uh, in Europe and about $15 a thousand cubic feet in Asia. It has changed everything because natural gas is what powers all of these industries. And it's given us an amazing advantage. I know of at least a dozen companies that had planned to build uh, facilities abroad and now what they're doing is that they've moved them to the United States and a lot of them right in Louisiana. So it's a big advantage and it's some positive news that isn't always getting out there. And finally, I just want to say that uh, I think, you know, certainly Hurricane Katrina was a, was a monumental disaster, monumental man-made uh, disaster with the failure of the levees. But it has enabled us to rebuild and reinvent our commerce and industry. And we've really taken advantage of that. And, uh, you know, frankly, New Orleans has been the greatest comeback since Lazarus, you know. And, uh, and uh, yeah. <laughs> And it's become the city I always wanted to live in. And, uh, and I'm just so glad to be here. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. <laughs>